In this video, we're going to create a mask for our player in Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com, and in the last video, we animated our player so the little feet and legs move whenever our player moves. But we noticed at the end of the video, when they sort of hang off the edge of the cliff, they don't automatically fall down as well as we would like. There's a little bit of overhang that we want to get rid of, and we can fix that by creating a player mask. Essentially, a mask will just outline the player, and then we'll use that outline as the collision mechanism to determine whether or not they've fallen off a cliff or not. So this is pretty easy in Pygame. It shouldn't take very long and it should be a lot of fun. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pygame series. So check that out if you haven't so far. If you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've got the code from our last video. I've renamed it Aspen underscore platform 8.py. It was platform 7.py in the last video. And before we do this, I want to just bring up Photoshop really quickly. You'll remember in the last video, this is the image or this is the type of image we downloaded for our player. And you'll notice as downloaded, there's all this extra padding. And you remember I told you I Photoshopped them down to this, changed the size and got rid of all that stuff. Well, I'm going to actually change it back to this just so it overemphasizes this problem of having all this extra space and having our character fall off the side of the screen. So what I did was I just went into our game slash images directory and our images were in this cat directory. I just created a new directory called cat2 and put the original images unedited in Photoshop in there. So we'll just reference those. And we can do that very easily just by calling up our code and coming down here to where we named all these. And instead of cat, I'm just gonna change this to cat2, right? So I'll just bop that all around. We need to do the same thing for our idle. Two, 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 and two. And then we also need to change these, uh, the resizing. Since there's extra padding, the sizing is gonna be slightly off. Uh, so what I can do is change this to uh, 74 by I think 85 makes it look nice. So let's just come up here to find and replace and just replace all of these. So we can come down here to, oh, actually I got it wrong, it's 85 and 74, I made this mistake earlier. And we just wanna change all of the 46 and 69 to 85 and 74. We could just come to here and click replace all and boom, it goes through and replaces all of those. So let's save this and run it just to see what we've got here. Head back over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash games directory and let's run Python Aspen underscore platform 8.py. And when we do, we see basically the same thing. But now when we come off here, you can see, oh, we could get really far off of there before we finally fall because again, our image now has all this extra space on each side that is sort of hanging off the side still. So, okay, so how do we fix this? Actually, it's pretty easy. So let's come up here and let's really kind of identify the problem. Let's draw a square around our character so we can really see what the outline is. This will really put everything in sort of stark contrast and allow us to you know, really see what's going on here. So let's come to our Aspen class and let's come down to our update function. And let's just draw a rect around our player. All right, super easy. We could just go pygame.draw.rect and we want to put this on our display underscore surface, which is our screen. Uh, let's make this what, say blue. Um, and then we want to put self.rect and let's give this a thickness of one. So if we save this and run this again, we can really see the problem here. So you can see this box is the entire image with all that spacing. And you can see now why we're not falling down because the box, the rect, is still touching the, the green there, right? So as soon as it goes off, that falls, right? So, okay, that's the problem. How do we now fix it? Well, super easy, we can use a mask. And a mask will just sort of outline our character. And then we can use that outline as our collision mechanism to test against. Right now, we're, we're doing our collision based on this box. So we'll just use our collision stuff based on the, the outline. So super simple and not too bad at all. So let's come back over here. And again, in our update function here, 
And we'll get rid of this square thing in a minute, but I'll, I'll leave it there for now because we're going to want to look at this. Let's create a mask. So to do that, let's define this. So let's create self.mask and we'll set that equal to a pygame dot mask dot and we want to create a mask from the surface and the surface of what our self dot image. So now we've created a mask. Now let's draw the mask and we want this to be points surrounding the player, right? That's basically what we're looking at here. So let's create a variable. Let's call it mask underscore outline. And this is going to be a local variable. We don't have to do self because we're just going to use it right here. So this is going to equal our self dot mask dot outline. Pretty simple, right? So now let's actually draw this so that we can see it. So let's go pi game dot draw dot lines. And we want to add this to self dot image. And let's just make this say red. And we want this to be true. And then and then what are we outlining our mask underscore outline? All right, let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what we got here. And you'll see we've got this red outline now. And it moves as we move. So as the feet move, it, it updates itself, right? Okay, so now we've got this red outline. And of course, we can get rid of the outline color itself. Uh, this is just a visualization so you can see what's going on here. Same thing with this box. We'll get rid of that in a second. But now, how do we make the game sort of identify that red outline as the thing that it should be testing against for its collisions? Well, super simple. We just come down to our collisions and make a, a little bit of an update here. So let's see. Here is where we're checking for collisions with the grass. And we're doing sprite collide on self. Uh, we're passing in our grass tiles. False, we don't want to destroy them. We can pass in another parameter here, which is just pygame dot sprite dot collide underscore mask. And that should do the trick. Now let's go ahead and save this and run it. And now you can see it's still bopping around because it's falling and hitting that tail and then bopping it back up again. We go over a little bit more. You can see right here it, that box is passing through. So all that padding on the side is no longer being used as a collision thing. And now it's hitting the, the top whisker, right? But it falls through. But now this is, I think, much better, much better way. So uh, now one thing to note, this is very sort of CPU intensive because we're using a mask here. And when we sprite collide with masks, it's kind of a good idea to sprite collide two different masks. So we really kind of want the grass to have its own mask and it doesn't right now. So what's happening is every time our mask collides with one of these guys, Pygame is sort of, I think in the background, creating a mask and then destroying the mask after we pass over it. And that's CPU intensive. It's going to slow things down. It doesn't seem to be right now because this is a very simple game. But if your game was more complicated, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that might start to cause a problem. So we can fix that very easily just by creating a mask for our grass tiles. And we can do that just one time. And so we might as well do that. So let's head back and let's come up here to our tile class. And we don't need to do it for dirt. We don't need to do it for water because, you know, when we hit the water, it doesn't really matter if it's hitting the mask or not. And we're only going to do that every great once in a while. So it's not going to be that CPU intensive. But we definitely need to do this for the grass. So let's create a mask for the grass. Super simple. One line of code should do this. Let's go self.mask. And let's set that equal to pygame.mask.from underscore surface. And what are we doing? Self.image, which in this case is our grass. Right? That's all we have to do now. You're probably not going to notice a difference, so I'm not even going to bother running that, but that will save you a little bit of CPU power, whatever, right? So, all right, let's come down here. Now let's find our update function. Let's get rid of this blue guy. Let's save this and run it. Let's see how that looks. We probably want to get rid of the red thing also. <laughs> all right. Zoink, zoink. And uh, very cool. Now, again, it's bouncing like that because it's hitting the whisker, right? So that's just a matter of our particular image. 
Very cool. Now let's also, while we're at it, let's get rid of this um, draw lines thing. We don't really need to draw that line. That was just for sort of us being able to see things. And now our guy is back. And it's working the way it should. Woo. Very cool. So a quick and easy way to sort of get rid of our overhang problem. It's definitely, it's subtle. But also it helps us sort of understand that we don't have to Photoshop our images like I did. I just did that because I'm neurotic. <laughs> I just wanted it to have less of an overhang in the last video, which I probably shouldn't have. We should have just done this right away. But eh, learn something new every day. It's kind of easier to break it apart into two videos and explain the mask. so They're not overwhelmed. And uh, I think that worked out pretty good. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. That's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDS of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 200,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from CodeMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.